it's time for the last game of the day. Defense of the Ancients 2. Episode of You Cipher. Today's match is going to be and Marksman. I'm CloudX with me, Vivek. What's up, Vivek? Marksman, they yes. opened the draft with the Earth Shaker. See, the problem is a green hero is left in the pool and picked up immediately. Necroforce is the instant pick. Yakshas, they just love their green stuff, man. They, they, they've been watching some of the best in the world. Necroforce as well as Pugna to open. That is brutal, savage, wrecked. And I'm curious to see how Marksman respond. So they got the ancient apparition. And he's one of the better heroes to have versus the Necroforce. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell us why? Yeah, I mean, one of the basic reasons you pick up an Ancient Apparition is to stop HP regen. Mm -hmm. uh, his final spell or his ultimate spell called the Ice Blast essentially prevents remaining. you from using any sort of regenerative items when you've been hit by it. Right. Um, the debuff, remaining. as it's called, lasts for a good duration, which means that the Necroforce can't heal you with Dead Pulse, the Pugna can't heal back up with the Life Drain, you can't use mechanisms, you're a sitting duck. Right. And honestly, that's what the Necroforce does. Radiant Necroforce is meant back. to keep healing himself. He's sort Absolutely. of like the in-house doctor that keeps himself and his allies alive mm -hmm. while the team fight extends for longer durations. Mm -hmm. Yakshas, so, while they've gone in with the green meta, I don't think it's a flawless meta. Mm -hmm. There are ways to beat it or Ancient Apparition, what better way to counter him? Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's not just uh, the heal from the Ten dead pulse, it's also the heal from the kills. Uh -huh. Uh, when he kills any enemy hero, he gets a whole lot of HP regen. And you also got fountain regen, you got the mech to worry about. So all, all the regen that Yakshas will be working with will essentially be nullified thanks to the ancient apparition. And this is provided he gets the ultimate off correctly, the mm -hmm. Ice Blast. One of the most solid ways for Marksman Radiant to go forward with this draft, uh, I'm sure you'd agree, is to pick up the Void here. Um, we've seen a tried and tested combination with the Void being picked up alongside the Ancient Apparition. Earthshaker, not too bad with the Void either. Long range Fisher to extend that stun duration. Absolutely. Yakshas though, this is, I, I wouldn't have seen this coming. Spirit Breaker is going to be coming out onto the field as their third pick. Um, it's, it's unconventional, I'd say, to pick up a Spirit Breaker as your third pick. I doubt he was going to get picked or banned by Marksman themselves. But uh, it is it is a piece of meat. It's a tanky piece of meat that you're throwing on the field. A hero that's hard to kill. Five and you know, who remaining. knows? Shayad, this could be their, their uh, trump card here. Absolutely. Um, the spirit breaker pick makes me question as to how they're running these heroes. Uh, so far, it looks like a mid Pagna, a safe lane Necrophos. Uh, but in CloudX, this draft has a problem. Hai. They cannot take down towers. Mm -hmm. They're going to struggle to take down towers. Um, with the Pugna, I think they've yeah, got uh, that covered. Yeah, you, you got the Nether Blast. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, Marksman, the draft seems a little more well-rounded so far. You've the got good team fight. The problem I do see is the lack of synergy. I mean... On Yakshas? Yeah, on, on the side of Yakshas. What's the Pugna and the Spirit Breaker going to do together? Right. Spirit Breaker, he's basically physical damage. Right. Pugna with the Decrepify amps up magical damage. Absolutely. They're not really, you know, they're not the current version of Dota, if I can put it any better <laughs> way. Necroforce, on the other hand, he's not got too many magic damage spells that work well with the Decrepify. Death Pulse has a long travel time. I wouldn't really count that as a devastating magic damage spell. And I, I like what Marksman have done here. They've noticed the lack of reliable lockdown coming out on the side of Yakshas. They'll pick up the Puck, who's a slippery customer. Very difficult to lock down the Puck in the absence of stuns and silences. And with the Spirit Breaker, I really don't think that's a good way to lock down the Puck at all. Face Shift, Waning Rift, really good versus that hero. Yeah, it's not reliable lockdown. And one of the good things of the Puck is uh, that he can just jump and pretty much eliminate the Puck now early on. Mm -hmm. Provided he gets up to a good start in the lane, gets that early whale of Discord going by, say, the 8-9 minute mark. And the Puck now should be an easy kill for the Puck. Uh, Team Yakshas, they're going to pick up the Bloodseeker. So, you've got some silence to deal with the Puck. Unreliable, but they've still got the blood right. Yet, Five there's no setup for remaining. it just now. Yeah, I think the problem is Marksman's draft, it seems like, you know, Kafi Soot Samaj Kar, they've taken picks that will that'll synergize well with each other. Whereas uh, Yakshas has said, Bhai, tujhe kya khilna hai? Main tera hero le leta uh, <laughs> Indian cyber cafe mentality. Why not, man? I mean, it is the first game. You've got a bunch of new kids going alongside some of the legends of Indian Dota. Absolutely. What better way to make them, you know, shake off their nerves in the first game than to give them what they're comfortable with? Mm-hmm. So maybe that's the approach they're taking here. There's there's a lot of mind games, a lot of strategy involved here. I, I've seen these players behind the scenes practicing really hard, man. I have a lot of them on my friends list and I see them pairing up and queuing as yep. five mans late in the night, two in the I night. I mean, I have Punk on my friends list and Radiant Punk is pretty much a scrimming day and night. Yeah. Uh, five man party, that's, that's all they do. 
they're practicing hard and uh, let's see if the dedication pays off for team yakshas yeah. uh, also i uh, you know i know that as casters we're not supposed to be biased but marksman mein mera former teammate baitha hai kon um, red aka sid i think he's playing as 1 2 3 1 2 3 dota in this game uh -huh. he's he's a former teammate uh, we played a tournament Five together once upon a time we lost that tournament somewhere we placed like third or something but that little bit of bias still exists now. i understand um that said punk is also a former teammate so. yeah uh cloudex uh still not sure who to root for in this team uh the team that the captains are sitting in the audience as well you got uh venim looking on uh sipping some water hoping that vp punk and acrid can pull his team through the opener yeah. at the u cipher and i mean that it's so important to win your opening match right yep. i mean if you pull out a good performance on your debut game the kind of confidence that it gives you going into the next few matches and you know you kind of become the team to beat the team to watch out for absolutely at this point kisi ko pata nahi who's the top dogs of u cipher uh -huh. no one knows how each other plays they kind of have a really sort really of understanding of what kind of heroes and what kind of play styles they like but no one's seen any five team playing as a five man unit just yet this is what their competitors will be looking at this is what all the other teams captains will be watching very closely to see how the u cipher meta is going to shape up and if that wasn't exciting enough somewhere down the line we're going to have a patch hit and a whole new meta is going to be thrown at these teams it's really going to be survival of the fittest here absolutely it's uh, going to boil down to who adapts and uh, that, that's what dota is all about i mean that, that's what sports is all about mm -hmm. who can adapt to the enemies at the quickest yeah. last pick for marksman they picked up the lunas they got some uh, push potential um they picked up the visage which gives me a uh, sense Commander. that it's an off lane or shaker uh, ancient apparition will be playing the heart support and maybe visage as a four there's a lot of combinations here i mean if they want they could run a mid visager run an off lane ah. puck uh an off lane earth shaker is not terrible either but you know i i like marksman's draft more i have to say bias aside just as a pure analysis view point i i feel like marksman ke pass better draft hai um lockdowns check pushing potential check silence check late game carry check they've got everything they need yakshas on the other hand it's a bit messy yeah. you got the lc that wants to fight early and the blood seeker that wants to fight early once you get to the ultra late game phase i don't think you've got too much to take down that luna especially once she's got illusions on the battlefield i agree with you um there's also another huge lack of synergy here you got kalnak playing the off lane legion mm -hmm. while legion by herself is a good off lane and you got a pugna to go with it and uh, if if there's a lack of communication between them this those Prepare duels could really go messy uh punk heading off to the mid lane getting that early observer ward uh getting a so, little bit of vision so just to elaborate on your point for some of our new viewers yeah. um pugna essentially has a spell called decrepify decrepify is one of the one of those spells that makes you immune to physical damage but it increases the amount of magic damage you'll take Legion commanders mostly about the physical damage with the duel. Duel yeah. is one of those spells which basically if you've ever played a game in a cyber cafe you'll know, you'll know that at some point in your life you've said you suck come play me 1v1. Yeah. <laughs> duel is essentially the Dota version of come 1v1. Come 1v1 and uh, the more 1v1s you win the more chances you have of winning duels in the future because you uh, get a little bit of extra damage mm -hmm. for every duel you win as a legion commander. All right, quick introduction of both sides. It is the first game of the season, so we're going to start off on the side of the Radiant. You've got Yakshas with Appa handling that Necrophos. Pugna is going to be in the hands of Punk. It's going to be Bloodseeker played by Acrid, their captain. Spiritbreaker is going to be handled by VP, and that puts Legion Commander in the hands of Kalnayak. For the side of Marksman, you got Mage playing the Luna. Uh 123131, which I presume is your former teammate Sid. He's going to be handling the puck. uh in the mid lane we've got uh, kotama sukami playing the earth shaker zak on the visage and that leaves us with the captain or rather the in game leader of marksman pashu oh, playing the ancient welcome. apparition yeah so quick correction it's actually zak on the mid lane not koto amatsukami vanilla ice cream Let's chocolate sauce etc playing the earth shaker zak is going to be playing the mid lane on the visage this is something we've seen many teams play not just on the indian circuit even on the international pub circuit So I feel like they've come into this game with a bit more preparation on the side of Marksman. They're coming in ready with uh, strats that kind of work in the current meta. 
despite the fact that the green heroes have gone on the other side, I still think Marksman might have the upper hand here. Yeah, mid visage, it's um, it's way much the meta in the West. Uh, we've seen some of the best players in the West of late in in-house leagues run the oh. visage in the mid lane. Uh, Korea ne nearly getting sniped there in the mid lane. Well, Earthshaker is rotating back towards the middle lane while VP gonna start with the charge and the pocket bottom is already thrown out the illusory orb. This could be painful. I highly doubt he's gonna die here, but they're gonna be able to push him back a bit. It's 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 gonna be really difficult for them to bring down the puck. We mentioned this during the draft itself. They have no obvious oh no. lockdown to hold the puck in place. For those of you uh, a little curious as to know what we mean by that, Puck is a really slippery hero. Uh, he can pretty much jaunt uh, 400 units across the map with one of his spells. He pretty much goes off the map with his uh, third spell called Phase Shift. I want to stop you for a moment because Khal Nayak is in a bit of trouble here. Never mind, he's going to be able to TP out the safety. And good decision to not TP all the way to the base. He just goes to the shrine where he can come back and start farming in the lane again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got three tangos, not enough consumables, but mm -hmm. slowly and surely he's going to get his way back into the lane. Uh, thoughts on starting out with the Bowman Shield? Uh, in this lane. Oh, Fisher block. Just he would have liked to hit that. That that could have been a kill. Kalnayak really pushing his luck here and he's not going to have his shrines up for another three minutes. I guess the plan here is to just leech as much EXP as possible. Again, just to elaborate for our new viewers once more, the way this top lane works for the Dire side is you get a Fisher stun, you couple yes. that up with a cold feet from Ancient Apparition. If the cold feet last for long enough, you'll get a guaranteed two second additional stun. Absolutely. All the while, you'll have Mage with the right-click damage coming out as the physical DPS score and an occasional Lucent Beam for the magic damage. Kalnayak dodging that Fisher was crucial, but this time they tag him. They even threw a Lucent Beam. There's the Cold Free Troc that we were talking about. He's frozen in place and Mage will score the kill. First Blood goes in favour of the Marksman. Marksman drops first Blood in the game and first Blood in the tournament. And they've got their team behind them cheering loudly in the dugout as well. Uh, good stuff, textbook it took them a couple of fishes to get it, but finally uh, they got the lockdown necessary and they got the kill. The mid lane is uh, the real surprise, or rather, I mean, it, so far, uh, I, I might be overstepping bounds here, but I think it's a failure for Marksman because the Visage is not getting anything out of his lane. Necroforce is going unchecked. Uh, all this gold is going to lead into items and all those items lead into momentum and objectives for Team Yakshas. Yeah, I mean, Appa's done the right thing. He's picked up uh, two nulls and he's picked up three iron br branches. So he's out CSing Zark by a mile here. And then with the Spirit Breaker coming in, they're going to do some serious damage on Zark. It's not going to be a death for him though. He will be able to back away for now. But they have managed to post out two rotations. Two useless rotations, I have to say because they're not going to be able to score any kills. Meanwhile, bottom, look at this. You've got uh, Puck duking it out with Punk. There's the blood right. It's going to tag him and the charge will come through as well, securing the kill. Marksman suffering a casualty of their own. Yeah, Yaksha has find a quick response. Uh, I mean, seeing that the Earthshaker and the Ancient Apparition immediately rotated to the mid lane, uh, they knew that the Puck uh, was all by itself and um, I was actually a bit surprised. Uh, Sid did have the face shift, if I'm not mistaken. He could have possibly dodged the silence coming out from the blood right. But I guess he was in a bit of a conundrum about who to, what to really dodge. The charge of the blood right, and yeah. in the end, he didn't dodge either. It's This is one of those lanes where it should be nigh impossible to kill off a puck. Absolutely. It's matlab, the advantage is entirely in favour of the puck in this lane. That was the only way they could have scored a kill on him. Yeah. With him getting tagged by a blood right, with him standing in the face of Pugna and getting baited, and then you have a mad cow charging in at him. It's like Bangladesh beating cricket in India. Uh, beating <laughs> Indian cricket, it just doesn't happen. Exactly. Anyway, we've got uh, the resume coming out. Minor hiccups as the game will get back on the way. Mage, he's going for the ring of Aquila here. Your thoughts, Vivek? Do you think this is one of those games where Mage goes for the Manta style rush? Or does he go for maybe a Dragonlance? I think he needs the Dragonlance. The stats are going to help him out versus... Uh, uh, versus a lot of physical damage coming out from Yakshas. He does need the BKB as well at some point. Maybe a Lincoln Spear wouldn't be too bad a start on the Luna. Actually, for the Rupture, the Life Drain, the Duel, the Reaper side, I know it's not enough, but it's something that Mage might want to consider in this game. Yeah, this is one of those games where items like the Lincoln Spheres and the Lotus Orbs hold a lot of value. Um, single target spells, the best way to deal with them is to have a way to actually reflect them or block them. But bottom, bottom lane, 
Charge on the park. The nether blast committed. This time he's got the orb, but he doesn't do do jaunt out of the blood right. He's silenced and acted will just run him down once again. Said falling in the off lane. This shouldn't be happening. It, in fact, if anyone should be dying this early, it should be Kaliyah. I mean, if this and keeps up in the bottom lane, we'll have to put a disclaimer on uh, on the channel, man. Viewer discretion is advised. This is turning NSFW very very quickly. Um, middle lane as well. Upper is just he's walking all over the visage. I mean, my heart goes out to this visage. He's getting no support whatsoever from his allies. The only support he got was when they tried to save his life. While that was successful, they haven't managed to keep his pace going. He's level five. Necroforce has crossed level six, and soon. I don't know, if there's a charge coming in on this Visage, he could even die here. Yeah, VP is just uh, looking uh, as to which lane he could make the next big play on. He's hanging around the mid lane, but you got the Earthshaker hanging around as well. But the, the thing is, Appa's level 6, Zark is hit 6 as well, so you got this Familiars, but the Reaper's side this early on is a lot more impactful. Mm -hmm. Last Seeker, meanwhile. He's, uh, I mean, Bloodseeker is basically the, I mean, the, if, if you ever had like Indian or Hindi lines for Bloodseeker, Main Tera Khoon Pee Jaga is so apt for this one particular hero. And the fact that he's getting so much farm on this lane, I, I think he's going to be decimating the mid game here. You can't leave him alone like this. You can't give him kills and assists versus the puck in the off lane. He's one of those heroes that snowballs the faster you get him online. And it's, it's getting to that point where I'm worried about what they're going to do to stop him. Mm -hmm. top tower Look at VP though, at the middle lane. He's thinking hey. about it. He wants to go for this kill on Zark and a Reaper Scythe kill would be devastating here. Problem is, um, Necrophos doesn't have the maxed out Death Pulse. He chose to put a point into the Hearthstopper Zora instead. Yeah, I mean, I presume that's just so that he can uh, sort of push the Visage out of the lane even more. Mm -hmm. I guess Appa knew that he was working with a CS advantage in the lane and wanted to absolutely stop Zark from coming into the lane as well. But what's interesting in the mid lane is that the Earthshaker seated himself. I hear a charge, they're moving towards the puck once more. The puck only level 4. There's the rupture to start off with. Rupture oh. followed by the charge, the orb. He joins, but there's a blood right on the ground. They're waiting for the puck. He's going to TP out and there's nothing to cancel the TP. We call this out during the draft. They have no means of lockdown and Very the puck well is abusing done. that fact. Very well done by the puck there. That was a sick escape coming out from him. A much needed escape as well. And I mean, the fact that he survives that means that the rupture is down for a good 30 more seconds. And his teammates don't have to be worried about uh, Bloodseeker going for a push. Problem is, for Gnazinia. And this is another Radiant's cheeky combination that we missed out. Attack. You give the Blood Rage Radiant's over to Punk on the Pugna and the Nether Blast hurts that much more. Yep. The way it works is Blood Rage is one of those spells oh. that amplifies damage. We hold that thought because Puck's in trouble once again. John from the Puck. This time, once again, Sid barely survives. Meanwhile, mid lane, you got the Earthshaker. He's just been sitting there. He's not leeching EXP, it's nearly the 8 minute mark. We're soon hitting the 10 minute mark and he's nowhere close to his level 6. This is rather ineffective coming out from the Earthshaker. Yeah, it really is. Uh, he's just been sitting mid to help Zark out, but the good thing is Zark... Top lane, Kalaya, cold feet, loosen beam, not enough. Belly survives. The good thing is that Zark's about to get... Well, he's got his level 6 online, level 7 now, and he can do a fair bit of physical damage. Problem is, Arpa negates all of it with the Ghost Shroud. Eight minutes in, 2-1 is the score. It's been a quiet start, but Yaksha is working with the lead. And I presume a lot of this lead is the net worth coming in through their calls. If you take a look at the Necroforce's net worth, he's at 3.5k, while the Bloodseeker is at 3.8. Mm -hmm. uh, the other added bonus is uh, that Kalak on the offlane, uh, playing the Legion Commander, has a whole lot more to show for than the Buck, who's, I mean, keeping up with his Earthshaker, that's really nothing to be too proud of. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, the off lane has definitely been won by the Yakshas. The middle lane has been won by the Yakshas as well. The safe lane for both sides may just farming, but again, he's not farming nearly as efficient. I think it's safe to say that Tino lane have been won by uh, Yakshas. Mm -hmm. Top lane, Yakshas. No minute ke baad smoke karke Legion Commander ke piche baite hai. Legion Commander still doesn't have the duel though. So, Bina Duel, I mean, this kill is going to be hard for them. But they've committed heavily. The, the plan from Yakshas is quite simple. Let's move from lane to lane. 
drop the blood rage and the nether blast and try and get as many towers as soon as possible. And, and that's that's the absolute right thing to do for them right now. All of this while Acrid is just being left, left to his own devices. He's peacefully farming in the middle lane. If he needs to join the fight, he's got a TP scroll. Put TP Marke, he can definitely come in and do some damage with mm -hmm. that bonus movement speed. So I think this is the right move coming out from Yakshas. They're grouping up to try and find a pick what, up before this tower. What's really interesting is how well both teams are reading each other. Uh, Marksman, I mean, they're just perched in this top lane. They sense that something's wrong. The charge comes in from VP. It's on to Mage. He's right behind the tower. An immediate cold feet on the Spirit Breaker. The fish as well. And with the Eclipse, they get the kill. Marksman. On point here, Necroforce, Pugna, as well as the Legion Commander, forced to back out. Puck, John's forward. Didn't want to commit the coil in the fog. Yeah, that was a risky play coming out from Marksman, but it paid off well for them. Actually, the Yakshas got a little bit impatient and Spirit Breaker charged in too far deep. Anyway, that push has been thwarted and because it's been thwarted, you'll have the middle lane being farmed up once again with Upper moving in there. All the while, Akrade said, I know you guys are going to mess up. I will be your insurance policy. As he continues to farm elsewhere, he's got a full blade mail online, he's queued up a Radiance and I've seen Akrid do this before. Teen Saal Pele, Akrid was known as the Flash Farmer of Indian Dota. Yeah. He used to get farm on heroes like the Chaos Knight. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I think the Bloodseeker is a lot easier to farm with elsewhere though. Yeah, Zark as well as the Puck teaming up, committing with the Fisher. And uh, now it's Marksman's turn to push. You're talking about Akrid three years ago. Akrid is a little bit like the Rahul Dravid of Indian Dota. Always reliable, a wall that always manages to help his team sail through any difficulties as a one position. And he's doing it once more. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's trying really hard, but up until he gets a BKB, I don't know how much he's going to be able to do. Because the Blade Mail is an item that lets you fight early. Yeah. I, I agree, he does need that BKB. That's uh, going to give Bloodseeker this real peak in terms of timing in the mid game. I mean, just that blade mail is not going to be enough. You've got so many sources of quick burst damage that blade mail is only going to tickle a bunch of them. Uh, meanwhile, it's still a minor lead that the Yakshas are working with. They have taken two towers, so they've got access into the enemy jungle. The question is, are the Yakshas going to group up and try and invade the jungle, or is the plan to shall just keep pushing again and again? Well, the Yakshas don't have a smoke anymore. The one that was on the on the Spitbreaker has been... Bottom lane, Acrid, Puck, Coil. Acrid held in place, Ice Blast, and the Fisher to follow through. He got the orb as well. Acrid is dropping really low and he's not even popping his blade mail. He pops it now as an afterthought. Appa comes in. Will Acrid end up falling? Appa needs to be careful. The cold feet upon him, a nether blast from Punk. The fight fizzles down and nobody ends up falling there. Yeah, that's a, an unintentional victory coming out there for the Yakshas. Acrid survived with a sliver of HP. And well, he manages to back away. He doesn't really need to go back to the base because he's got the regeneration coming in from the Blood Rage. Problem is, now you've got the Dream Coil on cooldown, you've got the Ice Blast on cooldown. Well, Ice Blast is almost back. Maybe Yakshas can consider making a play elsewhere. But uh, we do bottom have lane, DP Rupture onto Puck. Immediate TP. Once again, abusing the fact that there are no stuns in the Yakshas lineup. Beautiful stuff coming out from Marksman using the draft to the fullest. Yeah, this is just actually the, the marksman just baiting Yaksha's left, right, and center. It's that was pretty good coming out from the visage. Not only did he manage to TP out in the nick of time, he also got the birds, his familiars, to stun heroes in the AoE in front of him, and that prevented them from doing any damage, let alone cancelling his TP. It's like you pointed out, the only ways to stun people is to either commit a Necroforce ult, which could be a waste to simply cancel a TP, or to have a Spirit Breaker getting in position. The duel, sure, it is possible that the duel could cancel it out as well, but Kalnayak is just focusing on farming that Blink Dagger. Without Blink Dagger, Kalnayak is nothing but uh, a piece of meat on the map to be claimed as a free kill. He's not going to get in range for those uh, quick duel initiations. He's not going to add much value. He has to slow down and farm, and that's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I also think that on one side, the Yakshas are on a clock. Uh, I mean, the Bloodseeker, I, I don't think he scales as well as the Luna in the pure late game. Yeah. The Luna offers a lot more. And there's so much team fight coming up from Marksman. I really hope Yakshas start building into BKB somewhere down the line. I have to agree with you, but you know, when we talk about the Luna scaling towards the late game, one of her core strengths is the fact that her illusions pump out a lot of damage in addition to the hero herself. Uh -huh. Illusions can be dealt with easily this game. They've got the overwhelming odds from the Legion Commander. 
and they've got a potential Aghanim Scepter life drain on the Pugna, both of which pretty much decimate illusions. The only problem is, with the puck for a source of initiation and with the long range fishers, you can siege towers very easily with the Luna. Absolutely. And it's, it seems like they're going to get active right away. They're going to pop a smoke and wait behind Mage, hoping that someone comes to gank him. So, these to some extent, are not visible, but Mage is. To some extent, I have to say I'm not a fan of Mage's item choice here. Uh, Mask of Bandage takes away a lot of your armor, leaves you really vulnerable to physical damage. And, uh, I mean, right now Yakshas have a good mix of magical as well as physical damage. Mage needs to be really careful here with that Mask of Bandage. I hope he's building into a Dragon Lance for some cheap stats sometime soon. Right now though, Yakshas and Marksman, they're just trading. But this is a trade that Yakshas will take any day of the week. They're getting a tier 2, while, um, I mean, you just got Marksman managing to barely take a tier 1. Yeah, they're not going to be able to take more. And honestly, if Yakshas decides to just base race at this point, they'll take it, man. They'll take the, they'll take the tier 3 a lot before they take the tier 2 even on this bottom side. Tier 2, fortified, it's going to be slowed down a bit, but that Ice Plus did cause some chaos. Perhaps they are indeed going to back off, but look what they're doing. They're tipping to the Shrine. There's a Dire Observer one watching all of this happen. So the Marksmen are prepared and they're going to be the ones moving in for the kill here. The Familiars will scout out heroes. Kalnaik, does he have his Blink? I mean, you'd ideally be hoping that the Legion Commander is nearby with a Blink Dagger, but he's only just picked it up and he's on the top half of the map. If Yakshas take this fight 4v5, good, good, disastrously bad for them. Mage starts out with a Lucent Beam, Sid holding on to that coil. He's only got uh, Pout Heads and a Magic Stick to work with. Both teams playing with a lot of caution here. Yeah? They're just going to back off for the time being. Yeah, but I think that's a victory coming out for Yakshas in that minor skirmish. Absolutely. Um, you've got the tier 2 tower taken down, the tier 1 tower taken down. All you traded was your own tier 1 and you protected your own tier 2. Good stuff from Yakshas, good decision making. Yep, yeah, they get the tier 2, they TP back uh, onto, uh, onto the shrine and marksmen don't contest them. Uh, I think Ekthara se marksmen ki Kafi badi galti thi. Legion commander tha ne wo fight mein 4v5 fight tha. They should have taken it. Yeah, absolutely. I have to agree with you. They should have taken that fight on the side of marksmen. But problem is, unko pata to nahi tha ki legion commander tha ne fight mein. They didn't see him because he was farming in the neutrals. He didn't show himself in lane. It was very likely that he was just waiting behind to jump in with the blink duel initiation. Mm -hmm. But uh, better safe than sorry. They back away and they continued farm. VP smoked up, moving towards the top half of the map. Mage all by himself farming in the jungle. Oh, this could be bad. Needs to be careful. You got the charge coming in from VP. Where's the follow up? Nether Strike as well. The whale drop for good measure. Reaper side, dead pulse, duel. It's going to be a duel victory for Kalayak. And Apa scores the kill, but Sid comes in. Coil on the three. You got the Fisher bringing down Kalayak on the Legion Commander. And now they're chasing down the cow. Beef is banned in India for good reason because he's going to run away from you like that and scoots over to the bottom half of the map. Yakshas, they trade one for one. That and Marksman just, lose a core, which is I actually going to hurt them. That's the most triggering way to let go of a Spirit Breaker kill. He charges past you and stuns everything, including the familiars <laughs> that were coming to stun you up. I'd be feeling horrible if I was on the side of Marksman over there. They lost their, their Luna, they gave up a Legion command. They got a kill on the Legion commander, but the Legion got a dual victory there. If they got the Spirit Breaker, you could kind of write it off as even, but that was definitely a trade in favour of the Yakshas. Absolutely. <clears throat> Good stuff coming up from Yakshas here. Minor victories, but not big enough victories to really establish who's in charge of the game. Radiance As the game has progresses later and later, it's purely going to boil down to the draft and how well the teams can execute it. Um, Akrit still hasn't had enough of an impact in the game just yet. He's been farming away quietly. Um, seems like um, yes. he's still insisting on going for the Radiance. I can get behind that. I mean, it's not a BKB. Eventually, he's going to need a BKB. BKB. The Radiance is going to help accelerate his farm rate. It seems like they've committed to just taking this game late. Problem is, yeah, if if Marksman realize that that uh, Acted Bloodseeker is not going for an early BKB, they could punish him. All they've got to do is focus him and ensure that he dies. Especially if they can lock him down before he pops that blade mail. They've got they've got a major team fight victory just waiting Absolutely. to be claimed. The other issue though is if you commit everything on that silly Bloodseeker, you're not going to be able to stop the Necroforce later on. You probably won't have anything to stop the duel coming in from the Legion Commander. And Spirit Breaker is going to walk all over you in the team fight as well. It's a okay. catch-22. This is the advantage, this is the power of the Yakshas lineup. 
They're just such hard heroes to kill across the board. 19 minutes in, it's, it's been a quiet game, 3-4. Uh, but uh, it seems as if Marksman, they want to make a move towards the bottom half of the map. And once again, the Radiant clipped them with their scan. They knew exactly where they were. It's uh, so rare to see such accurate scans coming out. Mm -hmm. And it seems as if Yakshas are just Radiant's reading their opponents a whole lot better. This is very uncharacteristic of the Southeast Asian Dota games we've got our hands on off late. We're 19 minutes in and there's only 7 kills on the board. I think both teams are playing it safe because they do respect their opponents and of course the stakes are high. You want to yeah. win the opening match of the tournament. Absolutely. Uh, top lane though, VPN Kalnaik prepping once again to bring down Mage and the Luna. Mage all by himself, there is an Earthshaker, Earthshaker blinks in. Slams the ground with the Enchant Totem, a Fisher on to three and gets one kill rather easily. The Spirit Breaker bought down with that one slap from the Enchant Totem. Hey, while uh, Pashu also chips in and ends up getting the good kill. Stuff. This is a good move coming out from them. They score a kill, they pop a smoke immediately after. This smoke wasn't spotted by this Radiant Observer. I, it wasn't? I don't think it was. Okay. But regardless, they've moved in deep and they might just be able to find a pick off here. Watch for Appa to be jumped upon. This is their opportunity with the Spirit Breaker being absent. But there's no mana on the Puck. This is, this is not going to work well for them. Yeah. Puck's got his blink. Coil. Well, he had enough mana for that. Punk decrypts himself. Goes to suck on to the Ancient Apparition. Doesn't get the kill. Is brought down. While Mage comes in with a wraparound. And the Mask of Madness means an easy kill onto Appa. With the lockdown coming through from the Earthshaker. Well, no shame in admitting I was wrong. That went quite well for them after all. Yeah. Um, Puck had barely enough mana to pop a Dream Coil and that's what helped him get that kill. When, when Punk went down, instant Echo Slam follows it up courtesy the Earthshaker. But uh, unfortunately, Necroforce couldn't survive it. He ends up going down yep. as well. And uh, it's just ridiculous how fast the Marksman lineup pushes. Mage with that Mask of Madness, Vistage with his Familiars and that's an easy tier 2 for them. 21 minutes in, they've regained momentum, the crowd is cheering them on and they're working with a 2000 net worth advantage. Have yep. Yakshas been pushed into a corner that they really didn't want to be in? This is actually the first time in a long time that the Marksmen are taking the lead here. And it kind of boils down to the fact that the mid and late game stage does get progressively stronger for the Marksmen. Yep. This is when lockdowns, this is when that Ancient Apparition start to add so much value. You cut off the supply, the healing supply coming out from the Necroforce and the Pugna. And you've essentially left the entire Yaksha squad neutered for the duration of the team fight. Absolutely. And like you pointed out, the pushing potential from that Luna, it's insane. Yeah, and uh, she's getting closer and closer to that Manta cell, so you've got those illusions. I mean, overwhelming odds as well as life drain is good to some extent. But uh, the Pugna without an Agnim Scepter, it's still not enough. Akrit, he's farmed, he's gone back for that BKB. He senses that the Radiance might have been too uh, greedy of an item choice. And once again, the Ice Plus scouts them oh! out, scouts out the smoke. That's just unfair. Fortunate here. I mean, I don't know if this is some godlike but, but, reads coming out from Pashu or if it's just Lady Luck that's favoring him here. But, but. Yaksha still want to do something with this. What can you do? I mean, I mean you've got to know that Rosh is happening. They suck at taking Roshan. They, they're not too great at taking Roshan. And now they're just scattering towards uh, the southeast side of the map where marksmen are waiting for them. Earthshaker has his blink dagger, Puck has his blink dagger as well. If uh, Yakshas do not get the fight started out on a good term, they could end up losing a lot more. And I've even got Familiar scouting this out. VP, he's going to be spotted running towards the bottom lane. He's charging on Mage like a madman, which is a bad idea. But uh, yeah, they're going to slow things down. At least they managed to get the Familiars. That's about 200 gold, which is essentially a kill on the back of that smoke. But it could have gone a lot better for them. It had that Ice Blast not caught them. Marksman. Uh Seems as if uh, the call was to uh, back out and retreat. Both teams are committing heavily to vision, which is uh, really refreshing to see in the pro scene. A lot of uh, vision coming out from the Radiant as well as the Dyer, which is really helping them read each other's movements. Oh, bottom lane, Echo Slap, Ice Blast coming through. Puck trying to keep his teammate alive, but with that Ice Blast, it means nothing. Lucin Beam, excuse me, the Eclipse will ensure that the Spirit Breaker's got down. And Akron pops his BKB and gets the hell out of there. While the Familiar's pound away on the that one. Elsewhere, I hear a duel. Is there enough? Reaper side gets the kill on the Puck, while Kanayak takes down Pashu. Small victories here for Yaksha as well. They get two kills and only lose one. They're searching for more. They've got Zark thrown up into the air. Puck 
Live training him and he acted along with Zark. And excuse me, Zark who turns around and gets a kill. The dead ones though, along with the blood ride, will ensure that the visage goes down. And finally, it seems as the marksman make it a 3 for 2 exchange. It was actually a 3 for 3 because the Necrophos died after the Necro Slam, bought back, came back to get the kill on the visage. Okay. It totally worth Three it at this point. I mean, you need to find any sort of recovery in these team fights as you can. But the problem is. Yaksha's walk away with the Luna scot free. She's still alive. She's making progress towards that towards the Lincoln sphere. And once she's got that Lincoln, it's going to get significantly harder to stop her in these team fights. All of that was because it was a single target Echo Slam. Imagine if that Echo Slam hits more than just the Necroforce. He's done for. The entire team is done for. Yeah. But uh, they did manage to do some serious economic damage to Yaksha's and uh, forced out the buyback on the Necroforce there. Once again, both teams grouping up in the mid lane. Punk, uh, he's got the Blood Rage as well as the Nether Blast. Sid trying to clear the creep wave. I hear a Nether Strike, but VP ends up cancelling it. Acted gets the tower without any contest. Beautiful stuff coming up from Yakshas here. They knew that the Echo Slam was on cooldown, and that's when they look to take a fight. Or rather, an objective, and they do end up uh, picking up a tier 2 tower with no contest coming up from the Marksman. VP, let's do a quick item check actually on the side of Yakshas. They've got the BKB on Actrid as we pointed out earlier. Necrophos did get himself the Yules along with that Hood of Defiance. So he's quite tanky at this point. And he does have a way to deal with the silence coming out from the puck as well. Pugna is going for the four stuff. No Aghanim Scepter shenanigans coming out from him this time around. Well, well the Spirit Breaker, he's going for a BKB of his own next. Mm -hmm. Hold on, did the Spirit? Oh, okay. Spirit Breaker is going for a BKB. That's uh, rather interesting. Smoke has been popped here and it wasn't spotted out. So once again, you've got Marksman on the hunt looking to snipe a target. Acrid. His spidey senses better be tingling now and he is backing off. He dodges a bullet. But this time around, there's no trade for Yakshas. They can't push out the top lane. There's no tower to be taken Radiant's out there. Middle lane towers have been taken out as well. It's a freebie for Mage. He's going to TP Radiant's out Scott Tree as well. And, you know, we talked about how Yakshas may suck at taking Roshan. It's the opposite for the side of Marksman. They've got the Luna. They've got uh, the Visage Familiars. They can yep. do some damage in Roshan. Yeah, Familiars, they did it. I mean... You he's can also just... got the Ags, by the way. I don't know if you pointed out that. He's got the Aghanims. He's got oh, the Aghanims finished up on the top. The Ags, as well as the Solar Crest. The Solar Crest is really going to help Marksman when they want to siege. You can just drop it on the Luna, and she has that extra armor to work with. And a lot of that physical damage coming up from Yakshas will not amount to much. Then you're relying on the Pugna, as well as the overwhelming odds to I'm clear the creep wave. a little confused, though. He's got two familiars out. While he has the Aghanims, he hasn't resummoned summoned them. Okay. I'm not sure why he's doing that. I mean, you might as well put it on cooldown when there's nothing happening in the fight. Well, we spoke of Acrid as uh, the reliable core, but uh, Mage is uh, leapfrogged ahead of him in terms of net worth. Acrid is uh, impact yet to be seen in these team fights. Yeah, I mean, this is the real issue, right? He's gone with items that help you in the early and the mid-game phase, but he hasn't done anything in the early and yeah. mid-game phase apart from farm. It's a very counterproductive way to play the Bloodseeker. I mean, I would have been a fan if he went for the Radiance first and then just stayed and did what he's doing right now. Right. Problem is, he's adding no value to team fights anymore because they're basically beating him up with physical damage. They don't really care about his blade mail being on the front lines. They'll beat him up anyway. The only way that I see Yaksha's taking a successful team fight is if everything gets unloaded on that spin, on that Necroforce and he survives after it all. That'll buy them enough time to turn things around. Mage uh, getting closer and closer to that Lincoln Sphere. And then Radiant's after that, there are really top. no answers coming out uh, from Yaksha's. Uh, in regards to the push coming up from Marksman. Instead, the Yakshas are trying to force a push of their own on the other side of the map. You got Punk with the Blood Rage, uh, Blood Rage, excuse me, trying to do as much damage as possible. But if they are looking to trade towers, this is a trade that Marksman will take any, any time. I mean, this is a win-win for Marksman. They could even actually just push high ground right now. A Luna will almost always push a little faster than a Pugna. And high ground it is. Mage, the Lincoln Fear trigger. The Solar Crest dropped into a creep. What is the plan here from Ayaksha's Punk? He's got the Nether Ward. But 
marksman, they're just going to show a little bit of respect really? and they're just going to back off. Immediate scan coming up from Yakshas. They Hell know no, that man. Hell no. They're not backing off. It's it's the old Rock's Kiss play, man. They pop, they, they pretend they're going back, they pop a smoke and wait right where they were, hoping to find a pick-off. Pashu's given the liberty to go away because he's got the ice blast from long range. Oh no! They're going to walk into VP. The Echo Slam is there! The Eclipse to follow it up and it'll be the Spin Breaker that hits the deck first. Ice Blast is coming in and that'll seal the deal on up far. He's going to go up into the air, but at what cost as he comes back down to his death? The ward is down. Nectar forces are on a dieback timer. It's going to be a buyback from the Spirit Breaker, but is it really enough? Because Mage, he's still got the firepower and he can continue to go ham here, but it's going to be the puck that takes a beating from the overwhelming odds. He does jaunt back and TP's out to safety as well. You've got to be kidding me. Not a single death on the side of Marksman. They get a kill on the Necropost, they force a buyback on the Spirit Breaker and they beat up on the Tier 3 tower. Yeah, I'm not really sure if Mage needed to back out on the Luna. Uh, I guess he didn't realize how low the Tier 3 tower was because they could have possibly taken the Tier 3 and then moved on to the Shrines and Roshan, which is what you want to do when you win a fight so close to the enemy high ground. However, Yakshas, uh, they're playing with a huge network deficit now. And uh, they're going to start off and try and get Command some vision going for them. VP gets a quick D ward. Here is Shrine. Roshan's obviously going to be the huge point to contest here between these two sides next. I'm actually surprised that uh, Marksman didn't just take those two kills and walk away to Roshan rather than going for that game. Yeah, I mean, Main just TP'd out to uh, the offlane shrine and resumed farming, if I'm not mistaken. Well, Actu's got a bit of a power spike though. He's picked up that Sacred Relic and eventually he's going to get the Radiance. Again, a quick heads up for the newer viewers. What the Radiance does is it does burn damage or it does magic burn damage in an area of effect around the hero carrying said Radiance. It also adds evasion on you, which means that physical hits have a chance to miss. So, what it's going to do is it's going to work well versus the Luna who focuses on right-clicking you and hitting you with physical damage. What it's not going to be good against is the Puck locking it down with the Silence, the Puck doing damage with Magic and of course the Earth Shaker going in with the Echo Slam. But that's what he's got the BKB available for. That negates Magic damage. Once he gets that Radiance online, I still think there's a pretty significant power spy going over to the, towards the Yakshas and this might be their way to come back into the game. But Atrid has to stop farming and he has to start fighting with his team. Yeah. Uh, it is a power spike, but I'm still not seeing answers to the Luna. The Luna is going unchecked. Um, it's, I mean, they're going to somewhat rely on a synergy between, in some form of synergy between the Duel and the Reaper side, but it's, I, at this stage, the Luna is still huge. I mean, she's getting closer and closer to Ascari. There's going to be a yes. whole lot of cheap stats. She's got more HP, more agility, more armor. Yeah. And um, I don't know, if I was Yakshas, I'd be worried right now. I, I'm not entirely sure why, but it seems like Zark never has three familiars on the battlefield. I always see just two flying around. Maybe I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm is just he, looking is at he this when he dies. Is he microing one of his familiars somewhere? I can't for the life of me find it if he is. Nope. Anyway, with the solar crash, this should be an easy uh, uh, Roshan for, uh, for Marksman. Long range nether strike, but what have you done, man? You've gone into the enemy territory. Defensive push has got stopped. And they will get engaged. So Pashu. if Yakshas contest now and they lose, the game is over for them. Likewise for the other side, I have to say, because you've got two heroes running around on low HP. Right. You've got to pop that shrine. You don't want to give the Bloodseeker a lot more damage and movement speed. Again, Bloodseeker, one of those heroes that thrives on heroes that are low in the area. Um, Thirst, his spell essentially makes him stronger when there's more blood that's been spilled on the battlefield. So you this don't want to be on low HP when you're around him. Look at this smoke move. VP, Mage, Lucid Beam, the Fisher's there, Puck right on top of him, a blood right on the floor, but look at that. It's Visage who gets the kill. And once again, Marksman playing with a man advantage. Puck on the hunt for more. He still has the call, he sees Harper. He's, he's baiting him, luring him. In fact, he's just going to retreat. While Mage and the others move into the Rosh pit, the Yakshas contest. Beautiful stuff coming out from Marksman. I have to say, this is a very calm and calculated play coming out from them. They know there's no Spirit Breaker. They know they've got the man advantage. They'll take Roshan while the puck will create space. Fantastic stuff. It secures them an Aegis without any concern whatsoever. And what's worse for them is that Mage is about to pick up Iskari. If they want, they could simply wait, take the Skadi and then go up onto the high ground. No real rush for them at all. 
I mean, yeah, they, they're just going to wait for Mage to pick up his Cardi. Every, every advantage at this stage is huge and you want Mage uh, to have all the stats necessary for him to finally see his high ground. But right for minutes in, the scoreline is rather deceptive for its marksman working with a huge advantage. They're going for the finishing blow here. Can Yakshas hold on to their towers? Yeah, I think they've committed to getting that Skadi on Mage before they finish this job. But uh, you've also got Zark walking around. He picked up an ultimate orb of his own, so I'm kind of expecting him to get the Lincoln Sphere. Yeah, he's actually finished his own Lincoln Sphere. So there's two Lincolns now online on the side of Marksman. And what better way is there to deal with those single target spells than Lincolns? I heard another strike, but Mage immediately struck it up. Look at VP! He's just being shredded by the Glaives! He goes down before he can do anything. They've tried to go in here on the side of Yakshas. BKBs have been popped left side and center. And the puck will finally drop. It's a dual victory going in his favor, but Mage! Objective Dota is the name of the game. He goes to the barracks. There's the Ice Plus coming through. The Echo Slam unloaded! We'll finish the job on two. The buybacks are coming out left side and center. But the barracks have fallen and the damage has been done. Yeah, and it looks as if Marksman want to hang around for some more. They smell victories within the grass. They forced out a buyback on the Necroforce. They could go for round two. Enchant on him onto the Necroforce. A quick Yule Scepter will buy time, but Mage is dropping low. The Lion Friend nearly killing him. And now Axel comes on clean up duty. He's got the Radiance. He's beating him. He's on cooldown. But he's just running down the Earth Shaker. And with one last swipe, brings him down as well. Marksman, they get a lane of panics, but they give up ages. And a huge bounty on the Luna. That was a pretty insane gold swing, I have to say, on the side of on the side of Yakshas. Sure, they lost their barracks, but when you lose barracks and you trade for heroes that are of such high value, one might even consider saying it's worth it. But uh, you know, it's still too soon to tell. Luna dies, Earthshaker dies, Puck ended up dying in that fight as well. Aegis was taken out, Familiars were killed. A lot of gold does end up going back in the hands of Yakshas, and they're looking to push. If they can force out this Luna buyback, indeed, it will be well worth it for them. Yaksha's marching down the mid lane. It's their turn to push. 35 seconds with no Luna. Puck goes in. Blood right on the floor. Puck is going to jaunt out and tag a shrine. Uh, Puck focusing the, the tower here. While Punk with the Blood Rage is going to pound away with that Nether Blast. There's not much a Puck can do. Earthshaker doesn't have the Echo Slam. Zark is trying to see through these creeps. Official to hold them off. The tier 3 dropping low. Legion goes in with the duel. Gets the kill. Immediate buyback from the Puck. Zark. Trying to get a kill in response here. Puck TP's back in. Has the coil, drops it onto two. Appa tossed up into the air. Has a huge set that will buy him some time. The slow coming up from the Vistage. They want to focus Appa. The press the attack. Keeps the Necroforce alive. Of a soul assumption onto the Spade Breaker. But nobody's dropping just yet. They're looking for more. The Nether Ward pushing back Marksman. But Marksman do manage to hold on to the Tier 3 Tower. And in the end, that's a huge victory for them. It was a buyback on the Puck but they hold on to their buildings. I actually think that that's a victory in favour of the Yakshas here. They forced the buyback from the park, they escaped with everyone alive, and now they've got a bit of an economy, well, they've just out a bit of an economy blow here on the side of Marksman. Appa's getting pretty farmed again. He's, he, while he did buy back the last time around, he's making steady progress towards his Aghanim Scepter. And a late game Aghanims on the Necrophos can be the difference between a victory and defeat here. That respawn timer is ridiculous. The load cooldown on uh, Reaper Scythe as well, absolutely valuable in the hands of Appa. They just need another way to tra trigger those Lincoln Spheres in these fights. And items like the Four Staff and of course the Spirit Breaker with the charge could be put to that effect. Radiant's bottom shrine is under attack. Meanwhile, Mage, he did finish up his Skadi, so he's a lot more tanky at this point around. Yeah, Mage has got the Skadi, so he's got that extra stats to work with. But I'm still not entirely sure if Marksmen have enough to finally siege high ground and get another lane of barracks. Uh, at this stage, it's really crucial as to who's holding on to buyback. If Yakshas are caught unaware without buyback, um, they could possibly just end up losing the game here. They're just going to end up taking down the shrine as well on the side of uh, Marksmen and now slowly constricting the map and forcing Yakshas into their own base. Well, Punk, he did pick up that four staff the last time around. He absolutely will need an Aghanim Scepter as well, because he's the one that's doing most of the damage on Mage, as we saw the last time around. Just a little Pugna standing in the middle, life draining away, yeah. while Mage was none the wiser. I mean, life drain is such a sneaky spell. You, you really have to watch out for it. Oh, hold on. The Earth Shaker there. Fisher's in panic and uh, runs away. You know, Yaksha's 
I don't want to say they're out of it just yet. They have an opportunity. So it's a much if they can play some good Dota here, some disciplined Dota, they can make it work. Hey, BP, so it's a much good. Who to bina soch ke bhag gaya uski samne? What the hell was that? That's just. I mean, I think his objective was to high five the Luna on his way out, but yeah. Luna was busy breaking. Oh. Again, another shrine taken oh. out. Oh, oh, shake up. Mid lane, he wants to go in. Enchant hold him on to BP. The fish as well. You got the cold feet and ice blast, rather a bit of overkill, but it is a kill nonetheless. And now marksman with the man's advantage are marching down the mid lane. 40 seconds until the split breaker respawns, but he's boss. I need a break because right now I don't want to be glued to my seat, and it's not going to be here. So take a break. Yeah, this one has one. Yeah, this one has a link. Blood strike, nether blast. They're trying to hold on to the tier three, but Maze with the fast advantage just too much. You got the illusions as well. The overwhelming odds. Thrown onto the creeps, the tier 3 tower falling really one more, one low. One more. Mage, one more, one more. I mean, he could have uh, micro uh, just a little better, just a break but in the end, the break link. Just, just the break off. link. Yeah, because Beastman no, defared over the Beastman. Come, come, come. Last, last. Tier 3 tower will end up dropping and the base is exposed once more. Only this time it's... Uh, just the break link, huh? Yeah, Mage. He's going for the butterfly next. And that will just the break link, just the break link. Bloodseeker's attempt, sorry. Bloodseeker's going for a butterfly Only the break link. Huh? Only the break lane. Not a good, not a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, where do you yeah. go from here? You've already got the radiance, you don't need that extra evasion coming in from the butterfly. Maybe consider getting yourself an MKD to deal with the eventual butterfly or the uh -huh. herself. Boss, I need a break here because, because I'll, after after I'll be glued to my seat and I won't be moving. So take the a Lincoln, break. Abyssal Blade also wouldn't be terrible. An Abyssal, yeah. yeah. Thank you guys. Questionable itemization coming up from Yakshas here. And in the heat at the moment, Acrid. And I possibly made a mistake with regards to itemization that could cost his team the game. DP. Still just holding on to that one overclub. Bichare ke paas aur koi items aaye nahi hai. It's been about 20, 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes since I've seen him with these items. Ha. He is poor. Uh, Mage has got the Skadi complete. Uh, 5,200 gold. So. Luna's getting closer and closer to a butterfly. Yeah, and I, I, I wonder if the play from Marksman here should just wait uh, for Aegis number two. Uh, no for, real reason to not do that. Yeah, actually. I mean, they, they've well got wait. all the money they need. Uh, a fight, I mean, a miscalculated fight here could just be a throw of their advantage. And uh, Marksman don't want to do it. In fact, if anything, the pressure's on Yakshas to really try and get a quick pick off on one of the Kozan Marksmen and possibly force out buybacks. We're looking at a BKB potentially coming out on this Necroforce next. Uh -huh. um, oh, top lane, Kalnayak pops his BKB, runs into the Luna and runs right back, Kalnayak. Yeah, life is hard. Life is very hard for the Yakshas. I mean, game. I understand, like, how, how do you put this? The Legion Commander is one of those offlaners that tries to get a sense of momentum and tempo going. It's very crucial to try and get as many dual victories once you pick up the Blink Dagger. But Kalnayak, he hasn't gotten too much accomplished. I mean, he's had two dual victories. If I'm not mistaken, he's only used dual twice in this game. Yeah, it's. I, I don't think I've seen him use it more than twice at yeah. all in this game. And his BKBs, I honestly haven't seen his BKBs being put to good use at all. Seven seconds, I, I honestly don't even know where Hold he's on. used them at all for that Top matter. lane, VP, I mean, He's, he's having too much fun for his own good here. Charges past the visage and DP is out. Space was created, but how much space is the question? Because they've still got a 19,000 net worth lead. Yeah, and, and Roshan's Roshan up as well. Yeah, I mean, it really is go time here for uh, Marksman. I mean, there is such a thing as waiting too long. You don't want to let this game continue to go on because with, uh, with the longer this game goes, the more dangerous it gets with that Reaper side, that Aghanim's Reaper side being online for the Necroforce. You make a mistake on the side of Marksman now, Yakshas will punish you very heavily. Absolutely. Uh, Appa does have the Axe Apple, so he's got the reduced cooldown. That means that if he is in control by the Fishers and whatnot, it could have a huge impact for Yakshas in the upcoming team fight. But look at this. Marksman, they're moving into the Rosh Pit, and Yakshas have no choice but to contest. It's either contest or watch it, I was being taken down. But there's vision, I mean the vision advantage is in favour of the marksman. Never mind, as I say that, there's going to be a D-Ward coming out from Yakshas. 
but marksmen are not stopping. They're still in the pit and going to work on Roshan. Yakshas are not grouped up well enough for this. They need to get the position quicker here if they want to contest. Yeah. After it is throw down the blood, right? Mage will be able to sidestep it before going back into the pit. Rosh is supremely low at the moment and it looks like Yakshas are bailing. I mean, Bad the idea. call from Yakshas is to just defend high ground. I don't agree with that, man. I think you had to go all in there into the pit. Ensure that you got a fight in the choke point. Yeah. It's it's a little bit like this when we were in school and we had a subject we knew we really sucked at and you were like, ah, I'm examining it. Next year, I'll see it. I'll give it to you. But it, that doesn't apply to Dota. You have to take these fights or you're going to take the exam once more, but with a huge disadvantage this time around. They're dropping the blood right, they're dropping the nether blast, but the familiars don't care. They're immune to magic. The glyph forced out, the familiars being re replenished. And Mage with that Lincoln's, we're just pounding away blood right on the ground. Appa is holding on to that Reaper side. He can't really front line for too long. The Nether Ward only tickles at this point as Mage with the Manta style takes a lane of barracks. Kalnaik tries to force the issue, gets the duel. They needed the Earth Shaker and they'll get the Earth Shaker. Kalnaik getting off the fight on a good terms here. But VP will fall and the barracks will fall as well. Punk trying to man up. He's stunned by the familiars. The soul assumption split by three. A Yule Scepter coming up from the Necroforce. The Lucid Beam ensures the kill. The crowd goes wild and Marksmen are running over Yakshas in game one at U Cypher. They're still going. They want the tier three in the bottom lane. They want to close this game out right about now. Luna, she doesn't care, she's got the Aegis, doesn't really mind if it drops once, she's got a secondary life waiting and ready to go. That butterfly on Acrid, will it add value to his life? But now it's Appa that's been stunned up with the cold feet, Mage will sidestep another blood right and will come back for the tier 3. The silence from the puck catches out 3, they're gonna go in and they will bring down Acrid, he buys back immediately with the barracks are melting. Mage, just going to work on them bit by bit, willing to sacrifice his life for Mega Greed. As marksmen, I've got their opponents on the ropes. After we keep the chase going, Bashu will be able to survive for now, but the damage has been done. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Does Yakshas have what it takes to come back from mega creeps? I don't think so. I mean, you got the Radiance of the Bloodseeker. To some extent, it does it does help you deal with Mega Creeps, but it's not enough. A push of desperation coming up from Yaksha is here. They're just marching down the mid lane. But look at this. Everybody on the side as Marksman has buybacks. You also see Ice Blast flying through every now and then. This is an Ancient Apparition with an Axe Scepter. Oh, and this funny. is an Earthshaker who wants to make a play. He's got the Invis Rune. A low Echo Slam out of one. A Yule Scepter comes out from the Necroforce. The BKB from the Legion Commander. Can he get the duel off? It doesn't matter. He gets the kill. Excuse me, he's not the Legion, it's the Bloodseeker. What was he saying? There's the Legion Commander with the duel onto the Ancient Apparition. He gets the kill. Boxmen have lost their entire team. They overcommitted. Can Yakshas bound to recovery here? Every single player on the side has buyback. They will be able to buy back five heroes if necessary. And Yakshas will make sure that they have to. Are they going to give up a lane of barracks though? That's the question. Fortification pop. Three heroes on the battlefield. Ice Blast available and ready to go with an Aghanim Scepter upgrade added to it as well. They're giving up the melee barracks, the middle lane barracks by the looks of it, and are not willing to fight just yet. The Alive. problem is, Earthshaker's used his Echo Slam. That was one of the costliest Echo Slams ever. Fuck those in, Yule Scepter on the one. Actor trying to make a run for it. Ice Blast comes through and charge out if they get the kill. They hold on to their barracks and they're going to push them back once more. That's He's a dieback on Actrid, a hundred seconds for the Luna to simply strut in and do her thing on the yeah, base. It's it's uh, GG. It's I, GG. I don't see how Yaksha's hold on. I mean, the Mega Creeps are doing it themselves. The Mega last tier four tower stands. Can Punk hold on to his throne? It's Punk versus the world. VP comes charging in. The Creeps are doing a whole lot of work. And Mage will just rip him a new one. The overwhelming obstacle. And Yaksha's lose game one. Marksmen have done it. What a game. Marksman taking the first game of U Cypher Season 1. Joyous screams coming out from Venom and his teammates. Brilliant win coming out from Marksman here. They've shown that they're a team that cannot be taken lightly and are indeed the team to beat. Look at the joy amongst them and they deserve it. They've earned it. They've played some phenomenal Dota. Questionable drafting coming out from Yakshas. Day one of U Cypher, Naya Sport, Naya Superstars, Yehi Khatam Hota. And ask a player out there, I can say that nobody will be taking it easy in this arena. Agar aapko aaj ka din exciting laga, you have no idea what's in store for you tomorrow because tomorrow the Sherdils go up against the Yodhas. This is Cypher, Naya Sport, Naya Superstars. Main Varun.
And I'm Aisha, signing out.